Victoria Falls. In Africa, water is life. Without it, men die in torment. With it, they take on the strength of giants. This is the story of a great water whose strength men conquered, the Zambezi. Water is the life of Africa, but sometimes nature gives it with overwhelming bounty. Who could subjugate the great Zambezi? There have been visions of mastering the torrent's wealth, but the Zambezi, more menacing than dreams, flowed on, untamed. Its riches would run down to the sea in waste until the end of time. Around it, Africa emerged. Here in her tropical heart, a country twice the size of France was born, the Rhodesias. In 60 years, the Rhodesias have grown from empty bush to this. And still they grow, symbol of the forward surge that's transforming all of Africa today. Outside the ordered pattern of the cities, the river sweeps on, bearing with it the eternal rhythm of Africa. Surely men will live their lives as generations immemorial before them, here by the Zambezi. Harness the river's latent might to the needs of man? No, this Africa knows no change. But Africa was changing. It wanted more materials, more factories, more of everything. It was searching like every continent across our changing world for a better living for its peoples. For this, it wanted power. Coal, to be sure, there was in plenty. But between the wanky coal fields and the dynamos, 600 miles of single track. Power there was, enough for today. But what of tomorrow? What of the Zambezi running wasted to the sea? If we could make the river captive, make its monstrous strength our own, there was the power. Power for all the needs of today, for all the plans of tomorrow. Make the Zambezi captive.
the Zambezi Valley, a hot, lost world. Sometimes a steaming jungle, sometimes a parched forest, where men crawl into the shade of a leafless tree to die. Sanctuary of the elephant, the snake, the tsetse fly, and the old Africa. <laughs> Sanctuary also of a tribe, the Batonga, a simple people living by barter, ivory and skins in exchange for salt and bright beads, brought in from beyond the borders of their lands. <laughs> Then, surveyors, meteorologists, hydrographers. Measuring, leveling, plotting. Tearing down the trees, cutting tracks into a land where no wheel had ever turned carving a way into the kingdom of Nyami Nyami, jealous god of the Zambezi River. Fighting insects, the Anopheles mosquito, carrier of malaria, the tsetse, bearer of the sleeping sickness scourge. Marshalling the facts, making a plan, saying at last, let's do a final check here. And then the moment of decision. No more visions. Now you must be certain. Build your wall where the river channel narrows to the gorge. Here, at Kariba. Kariba Gorge, seen only through air vibrating in the heat. Its silence broken only by the trumpet of the elephant. We shall spend 125 million pounds before we finish what we start today. But how can you throw a wall across one of the greatest rivers in Africa? How do you do it? We plan to build our wall here. But first, we must carry off the main surge of the river from the working site, so we build a diversion tunnel and a channel. In this channel, we build a coffer dam to protect us as we work on sectors of the main wall. And we leave gaps so that when we demolish the coffer dam, the main flow of the river can rush through. And this leaves us with calmer water on the other side. So, we build a second coffer dam. Inside that, we can press on with the main wall, 2,000 feet long, 405 feet high, until at last, the job is done. And that'll take about five years. And behind it will grow a lake that can change the map of Africa. There's your source of power, Kariba. First to fight your way in, driving roads where roads have never been, following the elephant paths of centuries, struggling to get through to Kariba before the rains planning the inflow of 14 million gallons of the fuel you'll need to build the dam. Citing the tanks for the gas oil the temporary power station will drink up through four long years of labor.
First, you build a coffer dam. You build a coffer dam, all right. Toiling in the riverbed, battling always against time. Now uproot the forest giants, the baobab, the mupani, the musikile, and muchenji. Ball and chain in terminable acre. On this very spot when Kariba's lake is full, a trawler's nets will sweep this very floor for fish. Then, you demolish the coffer dam. Destroy in a fleeting moment what you took months to build. In the valley, Batonga chiefs call their headmen together. At one village, Chief Binga addresses them through his spokesman. I bring you here to tell you that they want to move us away from here. Away from our homes and the shrines of our ancestors. To new places, far away. But why? Because they're going to stop the river and all our villages will drown. How can anyone stop the river? Tell us that, by building a wall to hold it back. And where's the wall to be? At Kariba. Kariba! If anyone meddles with our river, Nyami Nyami will lash out in fury and the wall will be swept away. It happens about once in 10,000 years. It happened to us. And there we were with all our men and machines pitted against Nyamin Yam. The Zambezi flows gently now. Six months have passed since the river's final onslaught. Once again, we're ahead of time, but it was a near thing. With Kariba, it's always a struggle against time. The Great Wall is built out of Africa herself, 
out of her past to create her future. Cut and blasted from the living rock, hauled to the crushers in the dusty heat, round the clock and round again. Ten thousand men of many races, Africans from Nyasaland, Bechuanaland, Mozambique, Europeans from Italy, Portugal, France, and we Rhodesians. Cement. 350,000 tons of it, carried in special transporters over the escarpment down into the valley. Pumped with compressed air into 80 silos. Mixed into concrete, 250 cubic yards an hour. Concrete swung above the gorge on cable, anchored to Blondin cranes high on the other bank. It's more than a contract, it's a campaign. Radio your instructions to a driver perched in his tiny cab 2,000 yards across the river. C'è l'ispettore per caso laggiù? Sì. Andiamo via la nave, devo parlare con questo ragazzo. Sì. Ah, lo monto, lo monto, lo monto, lo monto. Pronto Mauro? Already, part of the wall is taller than Big Ben's tower at Westminster, almost as high as the Great Pyramid of Egypt. And still you go on pouring, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Dust, thirst, sweat, dust, round the clock and round again. Above the dam, the river rests. Its time is nearly come. The gaps in the wall are sealed. Zambezi hesitates, stops. And all the ages of Africa seem momently to stop with it. Then the waters spread out backwards, out across the valley to make a new lake in Africa, 175 miles long, 20 miles wide. A strange new world appears, an inland sea rising in the wilderness. The people of the valley, new homes were made before the waters came. Not so the animals. As the river rose, the creatures sought the high places, as they had always done in time of flood, and waited for the waters to subside. But this time, the flood came on and on.
some animals are strong swimmers. Others have to be driven from the dwindling islands into the shallow water and then captured. So it begins, Operation Noah, a handful of men searching a drowning valley, seeking out every living creature that can be guided to the shore or carried to safety. thousand Batonga, isolation vanishes. A new life begins. The strange, functional, practical life of the 20th century. Trade in place of barter. Modern medicine. What has been lost that is not doubly compensated? Now the giant is choked down to a trickle. A single jet is allowed to escape to provide water for the lands between Kariba and the sea. And still you pour. And as the lake rises behind you, you release more water to the riverbed below. Behind the wall now, the whole pent-up gathering power of Zambezi waits a captive river. Kariba Lake. In all this emptiness, a lonely elephant. Too weak to swim ashore. Barely strong enough to keep afloat. Struggling to reach the mainland several miles away. Even when you find it, there's not much that you can do. No one's ever rescued an elephant before. But you can always try. Put him a stern quickly, man. Tow it to the mainland. And in the shallow water, let it go. She must be in the water all night. But your troubles haven't ended. To stop it swimming back, you've got to guide it from smaller boats. Mike. Where the boats can't follow, you go after it on foot. And then it comes at you. <laughs> Very pistol. Harmless. But it will drive her to safety. And that night you write in your report, April 28th, one adult cow elephant rescued.
searching, finding, coaxing, driving. Some refuse to go ashore, or are too big and dangerous to capture in the shallows. So you try a rope and do your best. Now you set them free, these creatures that you've saved. Free to begin again their struggle for survival. All this time they've been bringing in heavy electrical equipment for the underground power station built in the river bank. This is the setup. Water from the lake drops 360 feet to six heavy-duty turbines. They generate electricity, which is stepped up by transformers to 300,000 volts, the highest so far used in Africa. This is the very heart and reason of Kariba, the subterranean power station deep in the rock. Two of the six great turbines are in place. A third is nearly ready. 500 feet above, the switching station stretches its fingers to the sky. From here, the Zambezi's power will flow through steel cord aluminium cables strung in pairs from tall steel towers a hundred feet and more above the lonely bush. Three thousand of these towers now mark the route that soon will carry Kariba's power 900 miles to the cities and the mines, the shops and the farms, the forges and the hospitals. The primal force of ancient Africa channeled to energize the new. Hey, Tony! Bravo, bravo, Tony! Water is the life of Africa. Now it touches the turbine blades. Awakens the generator shafts. Transforms Kariba from a project to the greatest single source of power south of the equator. Now close the switches. Complete the link. Release 300,000 volts. The giant strength is ours. And with this power, release the spirit of enterprise in man.
release from here in Central Africa, fresh courage for all those in every land who strive to turn the timeless void of nature into better living for mankind, here and now. It can, it shall be done. <laughs>